And now, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker this morning. She is a facilitator extraordinaire and a speaker who always lifts our spirit and fills us with joy. It is indeed my pleasure to introduce practitioner Sandra Cooper. Thank you, Vance. Good morning, everyone. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all here this morning, right in this magnificent oasis in the heart of Kingston City. Right here we call the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And let us recognize God in the faces of every single person that we meet today, tomorrow, and every day this week. And so let, let, let me invite it for us to say it together, I see the beauty and perfection of spirit in everyone. I see the beauty and perfection of spirit in everyone. A very special welcome also to those of you who are visiting us on the World Wide Web. I know that you made a choice to be here and we open our hearts and we welcome you with all our love. Now recently, I was in the checkout line in a supermarket, and as paying for my groceries, I heard someone say, Sandra, Sandra Hamilton. I mean, it, I looked around, and because it's a long time since I've heard that name. You know, I mean, like decades. And then I recognized this person as a childhood playmate who lived at, in the house in front of mine, where I grew up. I had not seen her since her family migrated from way back in the 60s. However, in that moment, in spite of the smiles and the niceties and, and her asking, so what are you doing with yourself these days? You know that question. <laughs> and and so, so we must keep in touch here. I kind of had a feeling for just one brief moment, a little dark, this sort of crept upon me. And then I re in that little moment, I became 10 years old again. And to say that she and her sister gave me a hard time is putting it mildly. <laughs> and then when they joined forces with my older sister, there was no escape to the name calling, the pranks, the teasing, and the experience of being left out of games. And when I was brought into the games, it was to play it over and over and over again. So that sense of being it, all of that stuff plays havoc on the mind of a 10-year-old child, of a little girl. And the seeds of I'm not good enough took root and flourished. So by the time I came to this church in 1983, I was a hot mess, insecure, struggling, and in a lot of emotional pain. Thank God for this teaching because it introduced me to my true self for the very first time. I learned about my relationship with God, that I was a perfect creation, whole, complete, and born out of love. By the way, the growth did not happen overnight. We're talking a whole lot of years between 1983 and now. And while I'm, while, while the I'm not good enough has not gone away completely, I can now conflict, confidently say that I control it. It doesn't control me. Indeed, living from the inside out, from a place of self-love, has helped me to grow by leaps and bounds. So as we wrap up our February celebration of love this morning, I would like to share my reflections on the power and value of self-love in my message, which is entitled, Self-Love, Truly the Greatest Love. According to author Alethea Luna, self-love is, and I quote, the forgiveness, 
acceptance, and respect for who you are deep down. All your beautiful and hideous parts included. You know, they talk about warts and all. When you truly love yourself, there is less focus on what you look like, how much you weigh, how much money you have, or how popular you are. You, we connect with something deeper, and we are able to peel away the layers of conditioning and self-critical socialization and see ourselves for who we truly are, sons and daughters of the living God. Real self-love is not about anything you can buy. Therefore, it is available to everyone. It is about healing, helping, supporting, and empowering ourselves. It is about examining what we believe about life and ourselves, and then challenging those beliefs to see if they are truly beneficial to our health and happiness. I thought, for example, that I'd gotten rid of the I'm not good enough thing. And then all of a sudden, I look down in my cleavage and I see wrinkles. <laughs> and all of a sudden, another one comes upon me. You're too old. So these little voices have a way of taking root. And we really have to be present to, to them. And we have to recognize that there is something bigger and greater than that little voice in our heads. And we have as a former politician would say, we have to mash down that lie. Now, some of us may, uh, we may hear this, but we don't have the depth of understanding to truly get it. And we might ask, so what is there to love? Such a question might arise in the context of some of the same old negative beliefs that follow us around. My response would be, what is there not to love? Genesis 1.27 tells us that God created man in his own image. That means that whatever is true of God must be true of the individual as part of the creation. This also means that we embody the same creative energy which is the cause of all visible things and that the qualities we attribute to God, which is love, wisdom, beauty, intelligence, power, and a number of other wonderful things, are also qualities that exist within ourselves. So let's look at it this way. So a single drop of seawater is not the whole ocean, but it does contain within itself the same qualities and attributes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Therefore, if God is love, so are you, and you, and you, and you, and, and me. Okay? How awesome is that? If the embodiment of these qualities seem a little difficult to appreciate, just think about the phys this, this physical body of ours with its 100 trillion cells that have come from the division of one single cell. 300 million of these cells die every minute. And we reproduce 300 billion new cells every day. Can you wrap your mind around that? As our bodies are constantly repairing and rebuilding. Consider the brain, an amazing supercomputer that can hold five times as much as the Encyclopedia Britannica, if you remember what that is. Its nerve impulses travel at 170 miles per hour. And it does what it does on the same amount of power as a 10 watt bulb. The human heart creates enough pressure to pump blood through 60,000 miles of veins and capillaries. It pumps six quarts of blood, circulating three times every minute. In one day, your blood travels a total of 12,000 miles. Just let that sink in for a minute. And then many of us use computers. Who is familiar with a touch screen? You have a phone, touch screen. Your skin is the ultimate touch screen. Each square, look, put your hands like this. 
and get a sense of what a square inch looks like. Yeah? Every square inch of this skin includes four yards of nerve fibers, 600 pain sensors, 1,300 nerve cells, 9,000 nerve endings, 36 heat sensors, 75 pressure sensors, 100 sweat glands, 3 million cells, and 3 yards of blood vessels. One square inch of skin. And just one last thing. If you lost two thirds of your liver, whether to trauma or surgery, it would grow back to its original size in four weeks time. <laughs> Our fingerprints are our own unique barcode indicating the true miracle that you are. As you know, Dr. Seuss, that has these wonderful rhymes, I quote him this morning. He says, today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. Can you imagine there's nobody that is more you are than you? Okay? How fearfully and wonderfully made we are. So what's there to love? Just start with the body. And it doesn't stop there. So this is just the flesh. A wonderfully functioning instrument. We use the power of universal mind every time we think. And there's no limit to that power only the use we make of it. We're also gifted with the power of choice. According to our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, I quote, man has the ability to choose what he will do with his life and is unified with a law which automatically produces his choice. That's a whole talk for another Sunday morning. Healthy self-love enables us to make choices that are in alignment with our highest good and which bring harm to no one. So we have the power to choose and to choose uh, things that will benefit us and enlighten us and uplift us. Love of self also enables us to be present to the divine urge within us that brings us guidance as intuition and which is forever driving us to expand and express our highest, our brightest and our best to rise into our possibilities, to grow, to thrive, and to prosper. When you love yourself, you take care of yourself. You honor your limitations. You listen to your needs, and you respect your dreams enough to act on them. When you love yourself, your happiness, your health, your fulfillment are nurtured. And self-pity, guilt, blame, and shame are stripped away. When you love yourself, judgment disappears your heart opens, and you're truly able to love another. And you're also able to smile more. Last week, Sunday, they had the Sigma run through the, the city. And everybody, whether we were runners or walkers or persons in wheelchairs, were, you know, at the walking, and everybody's focused. And, and I remember just being serious, I have to get there, one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. It's when I'm feeling like I'm about to burst, one foot in front of the other. So my face is knitted and <clears throat> focused. Someone to the left of my, of the thing, put up a sign. And the sign said, come on, this is a fun run, fix your face. <laughs> Self-love illuminates, it, it improves and deepens every aspect of our lives. It gives us greater self-confidence, the ability to forgive our indiscretions. We screw up sometimes, don't. We screw up plenty, don't. Okay. The heart, we get a healthier mindset and we have less self-sabotaging thoughts. Okay. We have an improved ability to discover and fulfill our personal destiny. 
We experience increased love, acceptance, and compassion for ourselves and others. We have more authentic connections with people. We have enhanced joy and gratitude for life and increased as access to new opportunities. Unless you have reached a high level of spiritual maturity and oneness, and by the way, take a, I don't think there's ever any place, any of us that can say we have reached, because this is a constant road, an uphill road, and we have to, 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 to uh, oftentimes learn many, many lessons on this road. We have to work at self-love. As spiritual beings having a human experience, our lives are characterized by highs, lows, and plateaus. Isn't that true? We have some wonderful high moments of great joy. There might be low moments of great pain. pain. And then we have some moments that are, uh, okay? But that is our life experience. The important thing here is to em embed self-love deeply into our spiritual practice. Then when the time comes and you are challenged, you'll be able to effectively address those challenges, declaring confidently, God's got this. You know, when we just surrender, we know that God's got it. I don't have to worry because God's got this. As Reverend Jesse Jennings puts it, in the midst of challenges, we don't react and respond. We lead the parade. Isn't that a nice idea? We lead the parade. So here are a few guidelines that you can use as you seek to deepen your self-love. Learn to be discerning and say, there's no truth in that, or no, that's not true. So sometimes we get some messages that come through us that are not, that don't, they're not in alignment with our highest and best. So when we say, no, that's not true, or there's no truth in that, that will help us to sort through a lot of mental rubbish and limiting beliefs. The truth is always grounded in love. Be your own best friend. You are with yourself 24 hours a day, through all the glory and all the pain. Practicing self-love enables us to consciously treat ourselves with compassion and consideration. Change the way you perceive your flaws. We all feel insecure at times, and that's perfectly okay. See what happens, though, when you meet inner challenges with gratitude and start seeing imperfections as an opportunity to grow. Practice loving all that arises. There's a quote that says, in all things give thanks, not for all things. So whatever is happening in your life, no matter how painful it may be, be, no matter how difficult the relationship may seem with that wonderful special loved one, there's a lesson there. There's an opportunity for your growth in that experience. So critical and condemnatory self-judgment is the antithesis of self-love and becomes toxic when it is used to negatively scrutinize, minimize, badmouth, shame, or otherwise harm ourselves. Embracing and accepting the nice and the nasty, the comfortable, and uncomfortable parts of ourselves takes a lot of effort, you don't think? You know, sometimes we don't really want to see that. Um, when sometimes I get up in the morning and, you know, I struggle to the bathroom. Uh, you know it is when we just wake up and I raise up and I look in the mirror and I see my mother. <laughs> and it's a little scary. But I'll come back to the mirror. Another thing, we need to learn the art of self-care. We live in a world that encourages us to be externally focused and outwardly driven. By learning how to love yourself, it's about going in the opposite direction and taking some of your energy and directing it inwards. And to finally stand up for yourself. What are your deeply cherished values? Do we know what our values are? Do we know what's on our card? 
That is an exercise that we did some time ago where we um, determined what our values are. What is it that we live up to? What are your boundaries? What lines are being crossed you know, in relationships that you have? In which areas do you feel taken for granted? Healthy assertiveness is about honoring yourself while at the same time being respectful towards others. Standing up for what you believe in is a powerful form of self-love. Friends, in every single moment of every day, we can call on the divine for peaceful attitudes, guided behaviors, and loving considerations because we have the best of cosmic thinking as our true being. At any moment we can say, God, what I must do? God, what direction should I take? How should I deal with this situation? What is the best solution? I can go here or I can go here. Which way I must go? You guide me. There's a hymn that says, guide me, guide me thou, O living presence. That is a mantra that we should have every single day, every single moment. Guide me thou. Guide me, O thou living presence. Because it is there. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So, this is something that we really need to wrap our minds around. Because we cannot love ourselves, or let me put it a different way. How can we not love ourselves when we discover that what's going on inside, we are motivated and inspired by the presence of God itself? I remember Reverend Elma saying from time to time, dear, we have to take care of our bodies, you know, because God lives here. God lives here. So let's say together, I think we, 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 we did one this morning. And let's say it again. I love myself exactly as I am. I'm going to repeat the whole thing. I love myself exactly as I am. There truly is nothing I need to change. Together. I love myself exactly as I am. There truly is nothing I need to change. This one I'm going to do in two parts. And I'll say it one time first. Love breathes my breath and beats my heart. I am here to express the greatness of love. So love breathes my breath and beats my heart. Love breathes my breath and beats my heart. I am here to express the greatness of love. I am here to express the greatness of love. And the last one. Love awakens me to my possibilities. I am grateful for every blessing that love brings to me. Together? Love awakens me to my possibilities. I am grateful for every blessing that love brings to me. Friends, the goal of unconditional self-love is to live our best life with a sense of wholeness, health, peace, and empowerment. It is about speaking to ourselves, treating ourselves, and seeing ourselves with kindness, forgiveness, fairness, encouragement, patience, and helpfulness. We do this to others, don't. Let us do it to ourselves. It enables us to change our lives for the better and provides for acts of service as we seek to make this world a world that works for everyone. So now back to the mirror. I will close with a quote by Byron Katie. And she says, do you want to meet the love of your life? Look in the mirror. Namaste.